Hi, this is Stuart Bruce. I'm GIS Program Coordinator at Washington College, and today I'm going to do a demonstration of some of the exercises we're doing in our Symbology lesson. Now, inside our GT101 course, under Symbology, I'm going to scroll down till we see that. This is actually, I believe, the seventh lesson in our GT101 workshop. And I want you to notice that we actually have four separate exercises. So my lecture today is going to try to review each of those exercises and give you some demonstrations of how you're going to use ArcMap to do that. Now all of the data that you need for these exercises is included in our GT101 folder under the Symbology folder. And we have um, some data here that you're going to use. So to start off, you're going to need to open up the Symbology map document, which I'm going to do right now. Okay, I cheated a little bit and uh, didn't have you watch uh, ArcGIS load. Sometimes it loads rather slowly. <clears throat> the first exercise on single symbol classification. And it's very important before you try to classify any data in ArcGIS that you have an understanding of the attributes that are available for you to use. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to focus in on this healthcare facilities. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on healthcare facilities, the table of contents. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the attribute table. And really what I'm doing here, I'm just going to try to get a look at what data is available uh, for us to map. So we can see we have the name of the facility. We have an address, city, state, zip. We have some interesting data that we're going to use in this exercise. We have the number of physicians at each clinic, the number of dentists, the number of physician assistants, the number of nurses, number of nurse practitioners, and we have the facility type. So now that we have an idea of what data is here, um, we're going to be using that a little bit later uh, when we do some more complex classifications. On your own, when you do the exercise, you really should uh, do that for each of the various layers that are here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this layer on by checking healthcare facilities. And we can see we have a number of dots on the map. Now, the most basic thing you can do uh, is to go ahead and open up the symbol selector. So if you just come over here to the table of contents and double click on the dot beneath healthcare facilities, this opens up the symbol selector. So on the most fundamental level, the thing that I might want to do is to change the color. So maybe I'm going to make those a bright red. I can also adjust the size of the dot. I'm going to go ahead and increase it to a 12-point font. And then I'm going to click OK. So instantly you can see I've made these dots more visible and a brighter color. Now since these are uh, medical uh, healthcare facilities, maybe I want to have a symbol that would uh, match up what they actually are. So if I open up the healthcare facilities, this time I'm going to go and actually open up the layer properties. So if you notice what I did there, before I just clicked directly on the symbol beneath it, and I came straight to the symbol selector. If I go to the properties, either by double clicking on this or right clicking and open up properties, I come up with our layer properties, and then within the Symbology tab, I have the symbol selector as well. Double clicking directly on the dot beneath the layer in the table of contents gets you to the symbol selector a little bit quicker. So I could scroll down and see if there's any uh, type of symbols here that might better represent a medical facility. Uh, perhaps a cross, for example, might do. We have hospitals, um, but based on our um, looking at the attributes, <clears throat> these are not all hospitals. Uh, some of these are doctor's offices and things like that, so that wouldn't necessarily be appropriate. So I might just go ahead and pick <clears throat> the cross, and I'm going to change the color to, um, I should reduce the size a little bit. I'm going to change the color to blue and click OK and OK again. So just a slightly different way to symbolize this. 
Now, if you don't find a symbol that you like, um, you do have some options. I'm going to go back to the symbol selector again. And inside the symbol selector window, uh, there is an option down here at the bottom called Style References. So if I go ahead and click this tab, this brings up a list of preloaded style references. And a big long list of uh, different things. Obviously, some of these don't really have much to do with uh, medical facilities like uh, C2 UEI Space Track. But I might find some additional symbols in the civic category. Um, I scroll down and I don't really see a specific uh, medical um, style reference. Uh, there is a possibility that someone has invented one and you could find this on the internet and load this in. It's a little bit more complicated. Uh, then we're prepared to go into for this sort of introductory uh, ArcGIS lesson. I'm going to go ahead and check the Civic, then click OK. And you can see the Civic style reference has loaded. And now I might scroll down here to see if I see anything uh, medical related. Uh, this child care facility, I actually use that sometimes. So I just like the multicolor, it stands out really well on a map. See if we have like a doctor's office or something like that. Okay, I took a little bit of a pause there just so I could look at what's available. Uh, in ArcGIS 10, they really updated the style references. And when I scroll down here, I actually found one that said doctor. I have to try to find it again. So here's one for doctor. And I can go ahead and just click OK. And this may not look too good on the on the screen, but I bet when you print it out, it would look really nice. You also have an option to make your own symbol. So let's say um, I'm going to go away from this doctor symbol, and I'm just going to pick uh, something different here. I'm going to go back to my cross. But if I want to change the look of this cross from the default, if I come into this Edit Symbol window, then I have a lot of options that I can do with this. So I, for example, I can uh, change the color of it. I want to make it uh, bright green, so I've adjusted the color. I could also add a fill. So if I hit the Add button here, I could add another symbol to it. And I'm going to go ahead and add another cross. I'm going to make that size a little bit bigger. Actually, what I'm going to try to do is make that cross match the size. So I have an 18 cross. I select the cross above. I can make that size 18. That would then enable me to create a fill. I want to pick a solid cross. And then I can make the color of that perhaps blue. Then if I take this one below and put it above, and you see now I have this sort of blue and green cross. I could also put a mask around it, uh, otherwise known as a halo. So this will help it stand out when it maybe perhaps crosses a line or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and then OK. So I've now created my own custom symbol. Now to be honest with you, um, you can spend hours uh, making your own custom symbol set. One of the things that you want to remember is that when you make a custom symbol set for a layer uh, like this, uh, it doesn't save to the actual spatial data. So if you want to reuse that again, we would have to right click on healthcare facilities, select the option to uh, basically save as a layer file. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to save my layer file with my source data, so in the GT101, Symbology, Healthcare Facilities Layer, see the .lyr, I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. And if I turn this off, select my Add Data button, and go find that again. You can see I have a Healthcare Facilities Layer, and when I add that, It remembered the symbology that I set for it. Now in this uh, first exercise A, there's also an option for you to make some 3D uh, symbols. 
So if you come in and uh, basically go to your style references, you can turn on 3D Basic, hit OK, and then you can pull in one of these uh, 3D layers. I'm going to go ahead and bring in a cube, hit OK. Now it doesn't look um, like 3D uh, in this particular um, arc map because arc map is 2D. You would have to use 3D Analyst. Uh, to be honest with you, I think I threw this in here because I thought it was kind of cool uh, to edit. So if we grab our 3D preview, you can see here I hit this little button down here and this popped up. So now I can see my 3D object. <clears throat> so the purpose of this part of the exercise is, to be perfectly honest with you, have a little bit of fun. Uh, you won't really be able to appreciate these 3D symbols until you get to the 3D analyst exercise. So that's a brief overview of exercise A, uh, use of the single uh, symbol classification. Next, what I want to do is talk about unique values symbology. So remembering our healthcare facilities, I'm again going to open the attribute table up, look at my attributes. And what I want to try to do is use what's called a unique value classification based on facility type. I have primary care facilities, pregnancy, dental, vision, and psychological. Open up the layer properties for healthcare facilities. In my symbology tab, on the left column underneath where it says show, I'm going to select categories and I'm going to select unique values. Now, ArcGIS cannot read your mind, so you have to tell ArcGIS which value field that you're going to use to do your classification. So as we just uh, looked at uh, in the attribute table, I want to use the facility type. I have to come down here and select facility type. Now, ArcGIS, and this, this can mess a lot of people up here, it does not show the values that are available for facility type. You must hit this button, add all values. And when you do, this will then show you what values are available. So please remember that. It does some other useful things for us right here. It uh, gives us a count, so we know how many of each type of facility are available. It lets us know if there are some basically were known as uh, uh, features that do not have a value. So you notice at the top here where it says all other values, it has a count of zero. So there are no features that do not have a value. So what you want to do is you want to uncheck that option. Now if we just went ahead and clicked OK, we can see that we've assigned a color to each one of these different facility types. Now clearly when you look at this map, uh, this is not a good color combination. Another issue that we have is, and this is probably really hard for you to see, so I'm going to zoom in. But right here we have two symbols that are directly adjacent to each other. So it's going to be hard, uh, possibly, if we make these symbols bigger for those to be visible. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my previous view. Now, I'm going to go, back, go ahead and open up the Symbology tab again. And notice this time when I open it up, it didn't automatically give me a count. So if you want to see the count, if you see these question marks here, all you have to do is come up and click this count icon, and it will show you the different values. There's some other things you can do here. If you want to change the order that they show up in the legend, if you select one of these features, let's say, for example, since there are five primary care facilities, instead of having these in an alphabetical order, I want them to be in the order of importance based on the count. So I can select primary care, and I can go ahead and move that up. I can have vision be right below primary care. So I have now reorganized these in the order of frequency. 
Now, the value <coughs> is being pulled from the attribute table. The label is automatically assigned to match the value coming from the table. If, for example, I wanted to change, let's say I didn't want to call it primary care, maybe I wanted to call it primary care physicians. So I could go ahead and I could add the physicians. Maybe I want to call vision, vision centers. Maybe I wanted to call dental, dental clinics, etc. So I can modify what appears in the legend. Now watch what happens when I hit apply, and then OK. Notice in the legend here, it's now using the alias that I assigned. Now, another thing that it does, um, which I sometimes find annoying, is that over here in the legend, notice where it says facility type. So the name of the layer is healthcare facilities. It's pretty obvious that it's a facility type. So if I want to get rid of that, I can just select this, backspace out so there's no value, and then I will delete that from my legend. Now, if you don't like the um, colors that appear here, you can go to the color ramp, and if we click the color ramp, you can adjust, you can pick a different color ramp. Maybe I'm going to pick this ramp. Unfortunately, that's not really going to help us very much at all. You may end up, for something like this, manually changing these facilities. So if I want to have primary care, I might come in and um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to my style references here, and I'm going to turn off 3D Basic. I don't want to use that anymore. And I'm going to turn off Civic. I'm just going to go with some really simple symbols here. So primary care physicians, I'm going to go ahead and make a big dot and call it green. This one I'm going to make a different color, we'll call it red. Dental, we'll make blue. I'm just sort of randomly picking these colors here. I think as I said before, you could really spend a, quite a lot of time trying to find the optimal color palette for your particular map. Let me do that one right. So now we go ahead and click OK. So now I have these really big dots. Now just to remind you of something I pointed out a little bit earlier, down here, see we have the two dots that are right next to each other. And then when we zoom out, we can't really see the two different dots. Now ArcGIS allows you to precisely place facilities uh, and there are times that you have to move stuff around. However, this lesson is not the point for me to show you how to digitize and move that dot. But just be aware uh, that there are times for cartographic rendering purposes that we actually adjust the spatial location of a center like this so that when we produce a map, we can clearly see the dot. Um, just got to bump stuff around uh, so it's visible and then when you do that what you need to do is you save that layer that is a different layer so I might call this healthcare facilities um, map layout just so I know that I've moved some of the features around so that I can clearly see them when I'm looking at the uh, city of York like this uh, it's really not going to matter the purpose of the map is to show pe show people where the facilities are not necessarily to have an exact XY coordinate of where the center is located. Again, if uh, I want to see this layer, I would uh, want to save it as a layered file. So I would right click, save as layer file. And this one we call it healthcare facilities. Now I've modified this, so this is my facility type. So I could just type in here by facility type and hit save and then if I remove this and hit the add data button again 
but here I have my healthcare facilities by facility type and I hit add and they come in exactly as I left them. These layer files are extremely useful, uh, especially if you're working in a team environment and you're sharing data amongst each other. You honestly don't want to, every time you add the healthcare facilities, you don't want to have to go in and reclassify the data and take the time to pick all the colors, uh, especially if you're going to use that data over and over again. Now, if you're doing what we call a one-time map, so let's say someone makes a request, it's a one-time map request, one-time analysis, uh, then you probably wouldn't save it as a layer file, uh, only if you know or have a pretty good uh, suspicion that you're going to use that same data layer again, then you would want to save your settings. Now, all of these techniques apply uh, equally to points, lines, and polygons. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do um, one line up real quick. This is the rabbit transit routes. And if I open up the attribute table for my transit routes, you can see that we have a couple things. One is we have the route code, route name, uh, and we have the number of passengers for each route. So a simple thing that I might do is make a route map. So if I open up my symbology, I'm going to go ahead to categories. I'm going to pick route code. Remember, I have to hit my add all values button. And I have a lot of different routes here. The color palette that I've selected here is uh, really just not going to work at all. I'm going to go back to this first color palette. And what you might do here is you might say route A is the red route. Route 1B is the blue route, kind of like one of these uh, metro maps. Route 2, call that the green route. Apply here. Through. I'm not going to do all of these because uh, I don't want to take up too much time. Just give you the general idea. So now when I click OK, you can see how I've quickly done, done a unique value classification. Um, so this is a typical way you would do a transit map. All right, the next type of map I'm going to do is I'm going to start showing you how to do uh, what's called uh, quantities classifications. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm, we're going to pick on our uh, healthcare facilities again. So I'm going to open, turn this layer on. Again, open the attribute table, take a quick look. There's a refresher. And we do have... Um, some numeric columns. So here we have the physicians and we have the number of physicians ranging from zero. And I believe we have zero physicians there because they're dental clinics so they wouldn't have physicians. I'm going to go ahead and open up my layer property symbology and I've come to our quantities. Now there's really two type of quantities that you use frequently. One is called graduated colors, and the other is graduated symbols. And I'm going to show you both of these uh, relatively quickly. So again, ArcGIS can't read your mind, so you're going to have to tell ArcGIS what value field you want to pull from. So I'm going to go ahead and pull from the positions. Now in this case, it automatically populates the data uh, because you're setting a range to it, and it knows what the range is, so it fills in this, unlike the categories classification where you have to hit that add all value button. You can change your color ramp. If you don't like that particular color ramp, if I just hit OK. You look at this and uh, the dots are really small, uh, not very large, and you really can't uh, tell what's going on here. So you have that same issue where you have to come in and you have to manually modify each of these dots. So I'm going to make the size bigger. I can see what's going on. Yeah, I'll do this as quickly as I can. So now when I look at it, at least I can see the dots are really big. So Looking at the legend, I can see the red is the highest number of physicians. So this clinic over here has the most physicians. And if I do click and identify, click on that dot, we'll just see what the attributes are. Um, 
So this is York Guidance Center. It's actually a uh, psych psychological or mental health facility. So these physicians are, in reality, they're probably like psychiatrists or psychologists. So this actually, to me, points out a little bit of flaw in this data. And it would be nice to have separated out the psychiatrists and the psychologists from your, uh, say, primary care physicians. And if I'm really sick, I want to make sure I don't go here because... Uh, now, see, now notice here again, this is that problem we have. This is the same spot where we have these two overlaid dots. <clears throat> so one of these is the uh, dental clinic, and the one next to it is the York Hospital Community Health Center. Clearly a place to go if you want to uh, find a physician. Now visually, when you look at this map, if you can't see the legend, so if you can imagine sort of crossing off a legend, you might look at this map and it's not really clear which site has the largest number of physicians. So if I go back to my properties here, instead of using the graduated colors, I can use graduated symbols. So when I pick graduated symbols, uh, the main thing here is that the size of the symbol gets larger depending on the numeric value for the field that you picked. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then with this um, view, we can really clearly see, just by the size of the dot, kind of intuitive, which area has the most physicians. Um, and it's actually kind of odd here, uh, probably hard to see on the screen, but in this case where we have an overlay, um, that's actually not going to help you any, but you can actually see um, the overlay. If I go back to... Uh, the healthcare facilities layer classification. Uh, notice these are purple. Uh, I can come over here and select the template. And if I make that say yellow, then click OK. Now you can actually see that where these dots over align on top of each other, you can actually still see that there's two dots there. So, so in a way, it kind of uh, obliterates that problem, unless both dots had the same uh, number of physicians, in which case they would exactly overlay. Okay, what I'm going to show you next is we're going to look at a polygon layer. So I'm going to turn on the York County parcels, a little bit more intense layer, and go ahead and zoom to layer. Again, we've got to open up the attribute table and see what's available for us to use. Now, usually parcel data has a lot of attributes, and I'm not going to even attempt to explain all of these. Uh, I'm just going to pick one out kind of here at random. I'm going to pick class. Now, in this case, class stands for land use class. Often when you receive these very large data sets that have uh, literally uh, dozens and dozens of attribute fields, a lot of times the headers have kind of archaic, uh, hard to understand codes, you need to make sure that you get the metadata for these files so that you can understand what the codes are. Uh, for example, here under class, you can see that I have C-R-A-F-I. Now, if you didn't know uh, what those codes meant, you'd have a hard time figuring out. Uh, I'm pretty familiar with what they mean. C means commercial, R means residential, A means agriculture, I means industry. Uh, F typically means forest, uh, but in this case, it might have some other uh, designation. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a simple classification under quantities, graduated colors. I'm going to make my value field class, land use class. Now this pops up because we have a large number of samples. And there's a certain point where ArcGIS will stop using all the samples. So what it's done here, uh, it's classified the data. Um, and I might have picked the wrong uh, code here. All right, I did pick the wrong code. What I wanted to do is pick class. Again, this is knowing your attribute data. And I can't do that because 
You cannot do a graduated colors classification on a field that doesn't have a numeric value. So I kind of goofed up. Let me explain that here. So in the attribute table, when I'm doing a graduated color, uh, basically I'm looking at numeric values. So I try to do a graduated color on a classification did not have a numeric value. What I need to do is pick something like the, let's say, the APR total. This is the assessed total value. So you can see I have an actual numeric value here that I can classify. And that's why that wasn't showing up. I'm going to go back to your county parcels, quantities, graduated colors. I'm going to make my value field APR total. And again, I'm getting that same maximum sample size reached. And if I simply hit OK, then we can see that the data has been classified based on the assessed total value. And my ranges are, of course, down to zero. There's no value up to what looks like about $17 million. So we have a couple of properties out here that are assessed very high. Now, when you look at this map, uh, what you'll notice is that it looks like there's a lot of gray on this map. And the problem is that when you're zoomed out, each of these polygons has a gray boundary. And when you zoom out, that gray starts to overwhelm the detail of the map. There's a way to fix that um, that you're going to be doing in the exercise. Now, a couple things about the classification. Uh, first off, I want you to notice that the ranges uh, end on rather uh, random numbers. Now, in the lecture for symbology, we do discuss the different classification methods. And if I go ahead and hit the classify button here, I have many different options. The first option I have um, is this sampling button. So we're getting those errors, which are starting to annoy me. So we're going to fix that. So I'm going to go back from here. I'm going to open up the attribute table, trying to figure out how many total records I have. Now, when you open up the attribute table initially, ArcGIS only looks at the first 2,000 records. So if you want to know how many records you have, down at the bottom of the attribute table, if you click this button here, move to end of table, I can see that we have 15,097 parcels. Now I can go back to my symbology tab, classify, sampling, and this limit of 10,000, I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to call it 20,000. And that's going to eliminate that sampling error. Now, in ArcGIS, we have several different ways we can classify the data. The default is natural breaks janks. Now, I don't have time uh, today, or I mean, I could take the time, but I'm not going to, to show you each and every one of these different classification methods. But I want you to notice, um, whatever classification method you pick, uh, you do have some statistics that are here that you can look at. But in particular, what I want you to take a look at is how these have randomly um, sort of ended. So when I look at these labels, my range from 0 to 148,310. Well, if you come in here and click right where it says range, you could round these off. So something like 148,310, we would want to round off to 150,000. And then here we're up to 150 to 731,000. So we're going to go ahead and pick 750,000. And then we've got, looks like 2.2 million. We're just going to make that an even 2 million. And we'll make this one 6 million. Now what that does in the label is it makes the numbers a little bit easier to see. The other thing that we want to do is notice how um, it says, for example, here, 150,000.000000. 000 000. 
you don't want all those zeros to appear in your legend. So if we click the label tab, just by left clicking it, we can select format labels. And in this number format, we can reduce the decimal places to zero. And the other thing we can do is, we know this is a dollar value, but we don't have the things that we're used to seeing, like a little comma, a thousand separator. So if I go back to format labels again, I can show the thousand separator. I can also tell ArcGIS that it's a currency field. That'll put the little dollar value in front of it. Now I click OK. So that makes a lot more sense to the viewer. Now I see I picked up those extra couple uh, decimals. Uh, unfortunately, when you pick the dollar value, it automatically throws those extra two decimals in. So we're just going to have to live with that. But now when I look at my legend, it makes a lot more sense. Now to get rid of those gray, um, grayish looking nature of the map, you would have to manually come into each of these symbols and basically have no color for the outline. That's what I'm flying through and doing right now. Now when I look at the map, I can really clearly see the colors. Now the comment I have on this particular classification is, um, in this case, the natural breaks has lumped. Most of the properties are below $150,000. So I do see these high-end properties out here, but I'm not really getting a good, um, I'm going to say, discrimination on the lower-end properties. So when I zoom into these neighborhoods, I'm not really seeing too much uh, what's going on. So if I want to modify that, I'm going to do one sort of modification here. What I would do is I would come in and I might uh, add some additional classifications. So I might go to a defined interval. Uh, don't mess with what I'm going to do. I'm going to go manual. And sometimes you might have to just reset this. I'm going to go ahead and reset it to single symbol. Come back, quantities, graduated colors, make my value field APR total. Again, it's giving me this uh, symbol thing again. So apparently it reverts back. Very annoying. And I'm going to do a manual classification. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the number of classes. So I had it set for natural breaks. I'm at eight classes. And then I go to manual. Now one thing that I've noticed that I've actually never noticed before in ArcGIS 10 is that for some reason on my machine, when I go to the manual, it's not letting me modify the number of classes. But just by increasing the number of classes, I provided some discrimination a little bit at the lower end. So I'm going to see the lower end. I'm going to come in here and adjust my range. I'm going to set one range at 25,000. Then I'm going to do 50,000. And then I'm going to do 75,000. 100,000. And then this one I'm going to make 125,000. And then 150,000. Click OK. And what this is going to do is going to give me much better discrimination at the lower end of my ranges. So now I can really see the subtle differences in total property value for these sort of uh, city neighborhoods. So there's a lot you can do with symbology here. Uh, the lab exercise is going to give you a chance to uh, explore that. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to talk about how to make charts uh, instead of this type of classification. Now, charts for the parcels may not work out very well. If you could only imagine trying to make a little chart for every one of these parcels, I'm going to turn off the York County Parcels Clips. 
and we're going to go back to our healthcare facilities. Go back and zoom to our layer. I'm going to go ahead and reset this back to single symbol. Zoom out just a little bit. If I go back into my symbology classification, go to charts. If I wanted to see uh, basically the variety of uh, things that are there, charts work really well for that. So let's say I wanted to compare the number of physicians, dentists. Actually, let's just look at physicians. So physicians, physician assistants, nurses and nurse practitioners. We'll keep dentists out of it for right now. I'm going to do a pie chart. So I'm going to pull the physicians into my pie chart. I'm going to pull the physician assistants into my pie chart, the nurses, and the nurse practitioners. Now, just to show you what happens, I'm just going to click OK. So I've created these little pie charts. And then I can quickly tell that in this location, I have nothing but physicians. And as we mentioned earlier, they're basically all uh, psychiatrists or psychologists. Here I can see I have more nurses in some of these facilities. Here's a facility that has nothing but nurses. And then here in this bigger facility, I have a variety of uh, types. Now, I will point out, since uh, I mentioned it a couple times already, that this one area, we had the dots on top of each other. What's really nice about charts is whenever there's a conflict with charts drawing on top of each other, ArcGIS automatically pulls the charts apart for you. And it's kind of hard to see, probably almost impossible to see, but there's a little... Um, little line that shows up that connects the charts back to their source origin. You just barely see it right here. So charts are really very simple to do. Of course, you can come in and adjust all the colors of these. If I want to make positions yellow, I can have them stand out. If you don't want a pie chart, you can select a bar column chart. So here's a little bar column. And we have the stacked column. I don't actually like the stacked column, but maybe you will. So charts provide really um, some different ways for you to symbolize the data. And I encourage you to uh, play around with this a little bit. Um, in an effort to keep my lecture from running extremely long, I'm already at 42 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and stop now. And uh, I hope you uh, enjoy this uh, exercise. Uh, symbology is a lot of fun, and uh, you can certainly take some extra time and uh, make sure that your maps look good and your layouts look good. Uh, if you have uh, terrible choices in colors or not everyone's an artist or can pick colors well, I'd sometimes recommend it that uh, when you're doing a map for public display uh, that you might want to show the map to one of your coworkers and get a second opinion uh, on the color. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that for now. And have a great day.